this morning. Hallelujah. It is a good thing. You know, we need to start this morning by I want to, my, I proceed and I also declare with the perfume of my little understanding that there is need for celebration of Jesus Christ. There is need. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is need. An average person on earth, when it is their birthday and you forget it, they will feel so offended. Yes. I forgot my birthday. That means you are not thinking about me. So now, the one that came and died for us, then we just live as if it's our right for him to come and die. I will not set out today. There is this argument whether it is today that's supposed to be Christmas, the day of morning of Christmas, the of uh, the birth of Jesus, or yesterday, or that argument I see it as frivolous and flimsy. It's not called for. What matter one thing is that the issue of determination is that was Jesus born on earth? The answer is yes. Now, is it worth celebrating that he came to die for us? The answer is yes. So if you can choose any day, even if it's 24 January, and say today we are celebrating about Jesus, I don't see, I don't see, some of the arguments are not even, does not even supposed to rise up in the first place. Praise the Lord. After, if they give birth to you and you don't remember your birthday, would you choose a day for your birthday? I've met a lot of people that say, listen, I don't know when I was born. You just choose the best day that you think you can celebrate. That day you tell everybody it's my birthday. Praise God. And it's your day. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you swear that it was the day you are celebrating that you made me? Why is it not because your parents told you? Praise God. If your mother forgot, and your mother forgot, and they just control one day and say, listen, let us tell him that it's first February. Praise the Lord. And you are now cracking down my baby is first February. Why? Somebody told you somewhere sometime. Praise the Lord. So I don't care about the argument. The argument is totally eroded because Jesus is born. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 But this morning we are looking at something that is very important. The, the title of the, of, the, of the message is Jesus the Lamb and Jesus the Judge. Jesus the Lamb and Jesus the Judge. We are talking about the same personality. But these two personalities or deities are totally different. Jesus the Lamb and Jesus the Judge. When we finish today, we'll be able to understand where we are. And I will start by saying one thing that is very sacrosanct this morning. We celebrate about baby Jesus. Praise God. Mary born child Jesus Christ. Was on that Christmas. Yes, yes, yes. But we should migrate from that baby Jesus. Praise God. Jesus is no more a baby. Praise the Lord. He came before as a baby. He is no more a baby. That's what I want to talk about today. Let's even talk about the first coming of Jesus. He came as a lamb. Jesus came as a lamb. And the lamb is a favorite animal for sacrifice among Jews. The lamb is a favorite animal that the Jews love for sacrifice because of the lamb is quiet. The lamb is meek. That is humble. The lamb is, is gentle. The lamb is most obedient animal. So what is quality now? Make the lamb to be used by the Jews.
as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The blood of Jesus superseded that of that of lamb because that of lamb was not able to wash out his sin completely. That was when Jesus Christ came. And he was addressed a woman figure that listen, this was the lamb of God. There is no spot in him, there is no wrinkle, there is no blemish. So what I just want to establish is that he came as a lamb, but he's no more the lamb. He came as a lamb, but he's no more the lamb. And even in Revelation, also in Revelation chapter 13, the word of God talk about that it was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. 13, verse 8. And all the dwell, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are now written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So Jesus came as a Lamb. We are talking about Lamb, Jesus as a Lamb. Jesus as a Lamb. Now I'm getting to close up on the issue of being a Lamb. And being a Lamb, remember, if you keep a Lamb anywhere, in the village you see people taking sheep. If you go to the field, you keep the sheep. In the evening, you come back, you pick the sheep the same way you got the sheep. If you put like ram there, if you come back, you won't see the ram again. If you put goat there, no problem. It can even commit suicide by even the room. You use that room because goats are not submissive. But Jesus came as a man, very submissive animal. And that was why he took all insults and all. The battle that came upon him on earth. Because if he had come like a lion, he would have not taken it. And if he had not taken it, he would have not been given this independence spiritually of being forgiven. So God sent him, he came as a lamb. And he went through a lot of things. I want to us to read before we migrate to Jesus the judge. Now turn your Bible to the book of Matthew and see what Jesus went through as a lamb. And he endured all. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 down. And I read very fast. Matthew 27, 27. Now the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they striped him and put him in a scarlet robe. And when they had planted crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bore the knee. They bowed the, the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hey, king of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the rope off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to be crucified. And as they came out, they found a man sitting Simon by name him. They compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is a, a, a place of score. They gave him a venture to drink, mingle with God. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garment, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garment, and among them, and put on venture, did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. And they set over him. His head, his accusation written. This is the king of the Jews. Then we are there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by found him wagging their heads and saying, Thou hast destroyed the temple and built it in three days. Save thyself, if thou be the Son of God. Come down now from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him. The scribes and the elders said, He said others, Himself he cannot say, If he be the king of Israel, let him come now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if you will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which we are crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Unto the night hour, and upon the night hour, 
Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why did thou forsake me? Some of them then stood there. When they heard that, they said, This man called Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with the vinegar and put it on the reed and gave it to drink. The rest said, Let me, let us see whether Elias will come and to save him. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he did not be those. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. You saw what happened. There was nothing they did not do to him. They mock him. They slap him. They strike him naked. They cast him out with his clothes. They spat on him. They hit him. They cover his eyes. When they hit him, they will remove his eyes. I will hit you, the prophet. Tell us who hit you. They mock him. You are saving other people. Save yourself. You are the one that has been doing miracles. Do to yourself. See you now. Help yourself. You liar. There was something they did not do to you. Why? He came as a lamb. And lamb don't retaliate. Praise God. Lamb don't even if you if you don't you don't you don't see any reaction from lamb. But I want to that is one message you need to go home with. Jesus has ceased to be the lamb. He is no more the lamb. Jesus has passed the avenue of not becoming the lamb again. He was the lamb when he did the sacrifice. Now he has done the sacrifice and not come back again for sacrifice. Jesus is no more the lamb. Now Jesus is coming back as the church. He's coming back again, not as a lamb, but as a church. These two personalities are quite different. They are radical, they have radical difference between a lamb and a church. Praise God. Praise God. Now, who is a church? I want to define a church to you. A church is a, an officer, or a public officer, or a judicial officer that is vested with authority to determine and preside over legal matters brought to his court. A church is very powerful. In fact, if you come to court, the judge is the god of his court. The judge is on and off. As long as that courtroom is concerned, so when the word of God is addressing Jesus as a judge, you should be able to understand. He was a man, but he's not a man. He is coming as a judge. Let me tell you, as long as a judge, if a judge declares any, if they declare any verdict, any judgment on a matter, it is final on that court. It is when you want to go to a bill that is on the front of official, they will say, okay, now, I, the moment the judge declares, even if he sentenced somebody to death, you must answer after the sentencing as the court pleases. That should be your answer. Whether you like the judgment or not, as long as you are in the court, you will hear the echo. This man has been sentenced to death and he will be hanged with the rope on his neck until he dies. And that is his sentence. And everybody in the court will stand and say, as the court was. Why? The judge is the, is the court of his court. Nobody question the judge in the court. You can go for a pillow, but as long as that court is concerned, nobody will say the court is judge. So Jesus is coming as a judge. And that's the personality we need to wake up and know about. He's no more coming as a lamb. He's coming to judge the world. He's not more Mary born child Jesus Christ. Was born on Christ. He's no more a child. It's not coming as a child again to be born again in a manger. We need to be very careful. As soon as a church appears in court from the chambers, as soon as he appears from his room, everybody will stand up. Even if you're incredible, you must show that listen. The CEO, I don't stand up because I cannot stand up. Praise God. But everybody must. Until the church sits down, you don't get sit down. It is what is called content of God. That can give you six months. You will cool your head off somewhere. Praise God. The church does not beg him for obedience. He commands obedience. Jesus is a church. He's coming back as a church. And that's why we need to understand. 
that we need to wake up and be on our feet spiritually. Because his coming back is not like a former man again. He's coming back in different personality entirely. I pray we shall not be found napping in the name of Jesus. I said we shall not be found napping in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the word of God in the book of Acts of the Apostles, we are going to Jesus the church now. The word of God in the book of Acts of the Apostles addresses him as a judge. And he's coming back as a judge. Acts chapter 40. I read just 40. And he was the youngest among the disciples. So Jesus loved him so much, and he was too close to Jesus. Now, look at what happened in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 23. John 13, verse 23. Now, there, there was leaning on Jesus, bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. That was the introduction of John every time. Jesus loved him so much, and the one who is living on the bosom of Jesus, getting serious, getting deep, 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 deep uh, answers for himself and for the disciples. And it was the only one that followed Jesus, even when they were going to crucify him. He had the boldness to enter inside the temple. He loved Jesus, and Jesus loved him so much also. Now, this is a John. He saw Jesus again, he could not stand even to look at Jesus. In the book of Revelation, John himself testified, after he went to Jesus, he to be a lamb, that he can lay his head upon his bosom. Look at what happened in the book of Revelation. He said, John, that he loved so much. Revelation chapter 1, I will read from verse 12 to 18. Because John himself wrote Revelation and was sharing testimony of his encounter with that same Jesus that was a man that later became a judge. Revelation 1 verse 12 And I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks 
And the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with garments, down to the foot, and guard about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in, in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the, as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at my feet. I fell at his feet as dead. And he said, and he laid his hands upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell. Praise God. You have to be very John realized that this was not a man that he was going before to go and place his head on his bosom. That this one has come. He said his eyes were shining. His sword was coming out of his mouth. Sword was coming out of his mouth. He was having style. He said, looking at him, it's like looking at his, his sword. When the sword is very heavy, you are looking directly at him. It was a dazzling atmosphere for John. And he said, as he spoke, he said, he hit John died. He said, I, I was dead at his feet. And I should tell you the difference between Jesus the Lamb and Jesus the church. Praise God. Yeah. So we are having Jesus the church around us right now. And that's why we need to build up and make up our mind. You know, the word of God talk about that Jesus shall appear in the book of Matthew chapter 24. He shall appear. And when he appears, the appearance shall be very terrible that day. And we need to prepare ourselves against the appearance. Um, um, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And in 29. 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be broken. And then shall appear, the, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And they shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. And they shall together this elect together together is, together is elect from the four winds for one end of the earth and the heaven to the other. Now let the parable of the fig tree when the branch of it will tell the tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my world shall not pass away. But on me that day and hour, no way, no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father alone. Only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, the days that we are before the fall, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the I will close in this, in this sermon, the book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, the men shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord.
Lord in the earth, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We have to comfort one another with these words. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 1. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 1. The coming of Jesus as a judge, no more as a lamb. I read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 19. Let me read 11 to 16. Let me read from 11. And I saw him open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and the righteousness, and he took charge and made war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a virtue deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the one prince of the fierceness and rod of Almighty God. And he had on his vessel and his star a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. So the coming of Jesus, the former Jesus we know as the Lamb does not have sword coming out of his mouth as he's speaking. When Jesus comes as he's speaking, there will be sword going out, destroying the enemies. And they will come in the likeness of some that you cannot be able to behold. A light is so much that you can't behold it. And he's coming with the armies of heaven. He will be followed by the, all the warring angels. And what God says, he is a judge and he make war. So it's no more a lamb. Lamb don't make war. But Jesus the judge is coming to make war against the Antichrist to destroy and now subject them and rule over them for 1,000 days and rule with him. So the lamb, the head of the lamb as well, we are in the era of Jesus the judge. And I pray that the day we shall come, we shall not be found one thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's make our I want you to pray for yourself. Say, God, open my eyes to know you as a judge. Because that is the beginning of redemption. I know you as a lamb that saved me from my sin. Open my eyes to know you, Jesus, as the judge of the world. That will judge the living and the dead. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, give me revelation, Lord. We pray for revelation to understand you. To understand you as a judge. The one that will judge the earth. Today we will see the grace to understand you as a judge. Ah, my Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes of understanding to know you as a judge. That you are not my lamb. You are a judge. Thank you, Jesus, oh Lord, for giving us that revelation. We give you praise. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, concerning our lives, O oh Lord, that give us revelation. Revelation to know you, who you are now. That you are in church, you are not more than We pray, Lord Jesus, that the revelation that will bring transformation, that we are able to qualify on that day to be part of those that will be on your side, shouting Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this grace and opportunity. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. In the Lord, Jesus in your life is very dangerous. Today is a very good day to receive Christ and to name today as your birthday spiritually. So anywhere you are, you want to receive Jesus in your life as your personal and say your bow down your head and begin to ask God for forgiveness of sin in your life. God forgive my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, Lord. I don't want to die in my sins. You have come to die for me. I don't have to die. I need you to believe. Now I believe. You in my life as personal and Savior. Forgive my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you want Jesus in your life, you say this prayer of faith after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. And on 
they told me he was again, that I might be justified. Thank you for saving me from sins and from Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you more. You came that we might be redeemed. Thank you for redemption of souls. Thank you for these souls you have redeemed today. Lord, I pray, O Lord, that these souls, O Lord, shall be for you. And the enemy shall not take them away from your hands. You say, all that God has given to me in the book of Luke chapter 17. He said, none of them we have found wanting except the son of perdition. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this one shall not be found wanting. And there you go. Be that way, so that I circulate this soul that you have come to you this day with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus was powerful and pray. Amen and amen. Congratulations this day for making today your birthday spiritual for accepting Jesus in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.